By this time, the rest of the mall was closed and everything was dark. There was no one around, just me and him. In this video, we need to talk about the truth about Illimation and I'm gonna introduce you to a psychologist by the name of Martin Seligman. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. But first, before I jump into the breakdown of Illy Nation's new video and introducing you to a psychologist, we are going to talk about what a lot of you have been asking about, which is my brand new book called Rewire Your Anger. So it is not out right now. I submitted it to Amazon and it'll probably be up by the morning. So make sure that you follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is the exact same. It's on the screen right now at The Rewired Soul. Follow me because as soon as it goes up, which might be later tonight, it might be in the morning. Don't know what it is, but I will put it out there on my social media. And I will also update the description as well as the comment section down below with the link to the book. And then later this week, I will be doing an audio book as well. All right, but anyways, let's jump into it. So some of you um, have seen that I already recapped her first video. Um, a lot of you suggested her, uh, Illumination to me because of what she's been talking about. And yeah, with the story of her abusive ex-boyfriend. So I covered part of it and then I covered also people talking about her staying silent. So go check out those two videos. They'll be linked up in the info card. So I just uh, went to the gym, watched her new video. And yeah, there's definitely some things that we need to talk about. And something that I'm always looking at, like, I, I was just talking to Tristan about this. I'm always like kind of checking out like human behavior, right? I'm wondering about thought processes and everything like that. And something I found interesting about Illy Machen from even her first video is she's answering a lot of questions that she knows are gonna come at her. She even created another little character that comes up and asks like these dumb questions. <laughs> Illy, you have to be stupid to not see these obvious red flags. I would never let that happen to me. No, I wasn't stupid. I was 13. But you guys, like, she was ready for it. And it's crazy because people are asking that in the comments. People are asking that on, on Twitter, like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't da, 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 da? So she tried to answer them as best as possible throughout that video to kind of get ahead of the game. But Illy Mation, if you ever see this video, like I put disclaimers in my videos all the time. People don't pay attention to them. But anyways, let's start out with this clip right here. Before we get into the thick of it, I really want to stress this. Don't blame my parents for what happened to me. Stranger danger? Got it. Don't know no squares? Don't touch them. They taught me to stand up to people like Harris. They even tried breaking us up at one point because they were suspicious that this very thing was happening. And that's a whole nother story I'll have to get into later. So yeah, it's important that um, we, we talk about this because there's so many questions about like, well, didn't your parents teach you? Didn't your parents teach you this? Um, and I hadn't watched her second video yet. So that was even something I was curious about, but she's like, my parents taught me this. And like, what it, what's important to understand is that you know, in my last video, I talked about how we have to have this open dialogue with our kids and all of that, but like still, there's only so much we can do. And there's there's a million books about this and I need to start doing more parenting videos, but let's look at substance abuse, right? Like I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Like, do you guys think that my parents didn't tell me like that drugs are bad? Like I ask like my clients at the rehab, I'm like, did nobody tell you that heroin was bad for you? Like we're taught these things. So there's something else that's going on. When it comes to substance abuse, a lot of times it's mental illness or trauma or, you know, just other, there's a bunch of different factors that I won't dive into, but you gotta understand that a lot of young people are taught these things, but then there's other factors at play. And my parents said, look, you're 17. You'll be 18 in September. You're going off to college soon. You're becoming an adult. If you trust this guy now, so can we. And hearing that, knowing the gross things he was doing to me, and knowing if I spoke out about it that he'd kill himself or me, I felt like I was telling my parents the biggest lie to their face, but I didn't know what else to do. So that clip's really important because it's important like that we understand, we understand. And a lot of reasons I make these videos, like I hope, I hope that people don't under, that don't understand trauma and abuse. Like I hope I can explain to you a little bit better what's actually happening. So what uh, Illy Mason was talking about right there is like that feeling of guilt. So there comes a point, especially after um, some people are, are abused where without saying something, now you almost feel guilty for it, right? So how 
is she gonna tell her parents now? How is she gonna do this? And like, I know from like the outside, it's easy to say, well, you shouldn't have felt guilty and all these other things. But like, eventually you feel guilty and then you keep quiet about it. And Illy Mation ends up going on and talking about how she started to rationalize this whole thing. I felt powerful. I felt confident. I felt reassured that I could handle his abuse. That if he did try to hit me, abuse me, or even kill me, I could defend myself. I felt at ease in our relationship. Seriously, that's how messed up your reasoning gets in these kinds of relationships. And this is called rationalizing. So Alienation, I love how she like gives you definitions of stuff, but rationalization is something that happens quite often. So working in drug and alcohol treatment, I've met a ton, a ton of women who turned to substance abuse because they were in a, um, an abusive relationship and they had children, right? And what happens is, and, and you gotta understand like the psyche of someone who's going through this abuse, like these women that would rationalize staying with a man who was physically abusive because of the kids. Their brain would tell them that, oh, it's better for me to stay with this abusive man so the kids have two parents. Like, this is what happens. Or they'll say things like, oh, how am I going to survive? He pays all the bills, da, 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 da. all these other things. This is why I keep telling you to get support, get support, find other people who have gone through this process before, all right? I will link again down in the description a ton of resources, but, it's our brain's way of tricking us into thinking that there's no other solution. That's one of the reasons why I always say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. When we get stuck in the problem, we start to rationalize what we're doing. Like you guys, like a lot of you don't understand why drug addicts keep using drugs. It's because we rationalize this. I told him I needed to be back at 12, so we should probably get going. What? We finally meet in person, we go on our first date, and we don't even make out? That's not fair. Okay, we can make out in the car then, but... After that, I need you to take me back. And by the way, you don't owe anyone anything, boy or girl, young or old, especially when they treat you like this. So real quick, you go girl, you go girl, all right? Like, this is so important, this is so important. I made a video a long time ago about like confessions of a former r slash nice guy, but like, what Illy Mason said right there, like you don't owe anybody a damn thing. And this is such a scummy tactic that guys use, all right? And like, I, I guess, you know, it can happen to guys or women, all right? But anyways, like you guys, let me, let me explain this to you. I don't care if this person buys you a Lamborghini. I don't care if they buy you a brand new house. I don't care if they show up to your front door with a mythical dragon. You do not owe them anything, okay? So do not let anybody guilt or pressure you into anything like that, all right? As I took my shoes off, I just felt so weird. I wanted to scream, to cry, to tell my mom what just happened to me with that man right there in the doorway, but I was so shocked. I couldn't say anything. I was so mad at myself. What happened to thinking I was stronger than him, that I could and would defend myself? One of the things that people ask is like, why didn't she do something? Why didn't she run? Why didn't she, because, Illy Mason talked about when she finally met Harris, when she met him, she's like, oh, I could take this guy. That's how she started rationalizing. Like, if this dude tries to do something, I'm gonna fight him. Well, when something happens and we go into that uh, cortisol-induced stage, that's what triggers anxiety. And the part of the brain that's responsible for that is the amygdala, fight, flight, or freeze, all right? And the unfortunate part about that is we don't get to decide what our body does, all right? So we don't get to decide whether we go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. And what happened to Illimation and what happens to a lot of abuse victims is that they go into freeze mode, okay? One of the reasons our brain does this is because we've evolved over tons and tons of years and some of uh, one of the ways to avoid getting eaten by a predator was to just stop moving. So our primal instincts kick in and sometimes we just freeze and don't do anything. So this is what really bugs me when people are like, oh, well, why didn't you put up a fight? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And then that guilt that Illy Mation was talking about, like her brain says, well, I can't tell anybody because they'll ask like, oh, how did this skinny little twig boy do that to you? Well, it's because of the brain's natural response. And that's what just drives me nuts because there's so many people who do not understand how the freaking brain works and, and they wanna accuse people of lying about these situations or over-exaggerating. He refused me a restraining order. He refused to even investigate. He threw my license back at me and said, next time, leave the adult things to the adults. Okay, sweetheart? And if you go running back to your little boyfriend, don't call us. And look, I understand that might be hard to believe, but the fact is, this is what happens in these kinds of cases. Some cops are nice. Some cops are helpful. 
and then some just don't see how fatal these situations can be. This, this video, like, you know, spoiler alert, it has a happy ending, but it bummed me out because I hear this story all too many times about, you know, um, someone trying to report this and they get turned down and that's what Ellie Mason was talking about. Oh, you thought, you thought I forgot to introduce you to this guy, Martin Seligman? So let me explain to you a little psychology right quick. So way back in the day, Martin Seligman and his group of little uh, psychology scientists, they did a test on dogs, okay? So they had this thing called a shuttle box, all right? So in this shuttle box, you had two different sides and and the dog would be on one side and the ground was like electrical. So what they would do is they would electric, they would play a sound, electrocute the dog, and then the dog would jump over to the other side, all right? So they were training the dog that when you get, when you hear this noise, you should jump over to the other side. So as after they started this priming and conditioning of the dogs, they started to electrocute both sides, all right? So they would play the noise and then the dog would jump over to the other side and still get shocked. So then what they did was they reverted it back to normal. They didn't electrocute the other side anymore and they would play the noise. The dog would just lay there and get shocked. And these scientists are like, what's up? What's going on? We got some broken dogs up in here. But no, that's when they came up with the idea of learned helplessness. When you keep trying something and it doesn't work, you eventually give up. But that's dogs, what about humans? So Mr. Martin Seligman came up with this new experiment. So what they did was they, they got two groups of people, two groups of people, group one and group two. So they put people in group one into a room and they played this loud, annoying noise. And they told the subjects that if you press this sequence of buttons, the noise goes off. So group one, noise came on, they pressed the sequence of buttons and the noise went off. Group two, the sound, the annoying sound came on and they pressed the sequence of buttons and nothing happened. They pressed it again, nothing happened. They did it over and over and over and over again. And they left these poor people in there with this blaring noise going off. So then they put them into a new room, both groups one and two, all right? But what they did with this new room was, all you had to do, you didn't even have to push a button, all you had to do was wave your hand and the sound would go off, all right? But the people from group two, and because of learned helplessness, when the sound went off, they just stood there. They didn't even realize that the sound would turn off just by moving their hand. And it's so important that we understand learned helplessness because it's the reason, it's the reason why so many people don't come forward. It's the reason why there are people who are stuck in these situations because they tried. They tried over and over and over again, but they got no results. So eventually the brain says, just give up, why even try? I interned for a little bit for It's Alex Clark and I learned how to do story time animation on YouTube. I started posting videos in January 2018 and I gained a bit of traction. And from there, I made a bunch of really good online friends and I met them at my first VidCon in 2018. But lastly, like I said, we end on a happy note. Illimation got out of that relationship and it's awesome. And I hope you take from it, like get a support group, build up your self-confidence, do the hard thing that you have to do. She got to a point where she said, you know what, I gotta cut it off with this guy. But the most important thing I want you guys to all take from this is something that I keep telling you all in my videos. This is why we share our stories. Like, Illimation is getting millions of views, millions of views going out to men, going out to women, going out to young boys, young girls, and telling them that you do not have to put up with this stuff and you can leave, and the red flags to look for so you don't become a victim too. So it's so awesome, and that, that is one of the reasons I have this channel. This is why I keep telling you guys, go out there, share your story because it can inspire somebody else, all right? But anyways, um, I'm going to do another video uh, tomorrow about something that's been going on in the community around these videos, so make sure that you're staying tuned to that. But before you leave, I wanna hear down in the comments below about learned helplessness. Are there any situations, like maybe life, maybe it's life keeping you down. Maybe you were applying for jobs and kept getting turned down, so you just stopped looking. Like, can you relate to learned helplessness, all right? Let's talk about it down below, but let's try to figure out the solution too, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. Hey, and don't forget, Rewire Your Anger will be out any minute now. So make sure that you stay tuned to me over on Twitter and Instagram. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.